The news breaking that Leonard Leo, this well-connected uh, you know, political donor who's trying to make the courts more uh, conservative, giving all this money to Ginny Thomas, not a reason to worry. I am being told by Leonard Leo who says, it's no secret that Ginny Thomas has a long history of working on issues within the conservative movement. And part of that work has involved gauging public attitudes and sentiment. The work here is that she did here did not involve anything connected with either the court's business or with other legal issues. As if that should reassure anyone who thinks that this is corruption. If you pay the wife of a guy who's going to rule on it, it doesn't matter if the work she was doing to get the payment was directly related to it. The timing is the scary thing, you paid her right before he ruled on the issue. I think he is intelligent enough to understand that, he is gambling that you are not. Goes on to say, I have known Clarence and Ginny Thomas since 1990. They are dear friends and are people of tremendous goodwill and integrity. He's saying that after all of the news that's broken over the past few weeks. Anybody who thinks that Justice Thomas is influenced in his work by what others say and do, including his wife Ginny, is completely ignorant of who this man is and what he stands for. And anybody who thinks Ginny Thomas would seek to influence the Supreme Court's work is completely ignorant of the respect she has for her husband and the important role that he and his colleagues play in our society. Okay, that's his defense, but you might say then, but if there was nothing wrong, why did you specifically tell Kellyanne Conway to leave her name off of it, to make it harder to track it? He has an answer for that. He says, knowing how disrespectful, malicious and gossipy people can be, I have always tried to protect the privacy of Justice Thomas and Ginny. Oh, okay, yeah, people are gossipy, that's true. TMZ would have been all over that payment uh, back when it happened. No, dude, come on. Everybody understands exactly what he was trying to do, why he was trying to hide it. He didn't want you to know. It's the sort of elite backroom behind the scenes dealing that conservatives love to pretend to have a problem with on Fox News. And then when they get an example of it, absolute crickets from them. What do you think, Brett? No, I agree with that part. It's like basically he sounds like how hilarious would it be with every crime if the criminal was like, I didn't, I, you know, I, I hit, I didn't write payment for killing my wife because you know how <laughs> gossipy people can get. <laughs> I didn't write that in the memo on the the check. No, you put it in cash and you walk it over. He, you know, I, I've only seen office space about 15 times, but essentially to uh, hide the source of money by channeling it through an intermediary <laughs> is essentially the definition of money laundering. This guy is uh, hiding the source of money by channeling it through an intermediary. He's paying mm. Ginny Thomas. And, yep. and honestly, like, my brother was like an opposition researcher in Alabama. He got someone thrown off a case because the 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 husband of the prosecutor was connected to the people who had a political interest in the prosecution. And so that Lura Canary was thrown off the case because it was it, it, there was a reasonable suspicion of impropriety. The argument that the right wing has, get this, is that. There is no real difference between how close they are as friends and uh, and essentially what would be on its face determined to be improper conduct. Yeah, like there, it's so entrenched the corruption that there's nothing you can really do about it. Their argument is everybody in this cabal is all such close friends you can't get mad yeah. at them. They're friends because they have benefits. Yeah. <laughs> There's a term for that actually. Yeah, there there isn't or at least there should not be a bribery buddy loophole. Like if you picture the classic like bag of money being handed under a bathroom stall, I don't care if they've gone to TGI Fridays together a few times. Like that's not the issue. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.